Today, Tether slides below its $1 peg as the crypto carnage drags on. DeFi protocol Anchor considers cutting yields to stabilize Terra USD. And we talked to Stacked CEO Joel Birch on why he thinks that digital currencies have further to fall. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Pippa Stevens. It is red across the board yet again. Crypto prices continue to free fall as investors head for the exits. As of noon Eastern, Bitcoin traded around $29,000, and that is actually up from its overnight low of about $25,000. Ether dipped below $2,000, and we're keeping our eye on another stable coin today, Tether. It fell below its $1 peg overnight to about 95 cents at the low. Much of the panic in cryptocurrency markets is tied to Terra USD's crash, and it's hitting stablecoins particularly hard. Tether, which is the world's largest stablecoin, is facing a sell-off as investors grow skeptical that these kinds of assets are reliable. Now, Tether has long been scrutinized for its ability to back up its token with real assets. Tether said USDT was backed one-to-one -one by US dollars held in reserves, but a settlement with the New York Attorney General revealed that isn't the case. Tether relies partially on short-term unsecured debt to back up its assets, what's known as commercial paper. And Tether said it's reducing its reliance on this debt, but right now it only adds uncertainty to a market that's already fearful. Tether's chief technology officer tweeted that Tether continues to honor $1 redemptions regardless of the de-pegging. We're also continuing to watch what's happening with Terra. Activity on the blockchain was officially halted on the network, with Terraform Labs saying Luna prices have fallen so low that it's difficult to prevent a governance attack. It's just the latest in a series of urgent measures taken by Terra to get both UST and Luna under control. Anchor, a decentralized finance protocol that runs on the Terra network, has also proposed cutting yields on tokens held on the platform. The proposal would change the interest rate from 19.5% to just 4%. Finally, lawmakers on Capitol Hill are also watching the turmoil in the stablecoin market closely. Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey said, quote, failure should be an option for stablecoins and that it will likely take some failures for the market to understand what works. Toomey has proposed clearer guidelines from Congress for stablecoins, but has warned the Biden administration that it shouldn't stifle innovation. For our main story today, we're continuing to watch the carnage in the crypto markets. I spoke to Joel Birch, CEO of crypto education platform Stacked, to find out what he's watching in the near term. So Joel, let's start with just what you think is driving the sell-off. A lot of the narrative has been that crypto is correlated with tech, but now stable coins seem to be playing a, a bigger role here as well. Well, Pippa, I wouldn't say that stable coins are playing a bigger role. I would specifically say that UST, which had the collapse in the last couple of days, has been the primary factor of the fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's obviously leading to lower price action right now. So for me personally, I don't have any overarching fear for the larger stablecoin market, in particular USDC or Tether. Um, but there's no doubt that the collapse of the Luna and you know Terra ecosystem stablecoin led to a lot of panic selling, which has accelerated, I think, the sell off of crypto for sure. But why don't you think that will have an impact across stable coins? Why do you think that this is more of an isolated instance? Well, I think you're definitely seeing a lot of people start to question whether or not the money that they have in stable coins is safe. So you've started to see a little bit more of a bank run across Tether and USDC redemptions. I don't know about USDC specifically, but I think Tether successfully redeemed over a billion dollars yesterday. Uh, you can go directly to their website to redeem at $1. And so while I do think it is driving investors in some cases to sell the stables they have, those aren't algorithmically backed stable coins. They're not backed by a volatile asset. They're not set up in the same way that UST is. So if people do bank run Tether or USDC, there should be enough reserves to cover it. And you deal with retail investors specifically. So what is the state of retail crypto investors right now with all this volatility, these huge declines? Are they selling? Are they holding? Kind of what is the outlook there? Yeah, what you're actually seeing right now is that the majority uh, across, this, across the exchanges, the majority of volumes are significantly lower than they've been in a long time. So while you've seen this massive sell off in cryptos, you're not seeing even the sell volume that we saw back in February. 
uh, you're seeing fairly low volumes. And that's because at this point, a lot of the retail hands are relatively shaken out or diamond handing, you know, to, to wait for that next run, which is at some point in the future. So you're actually not seeing a ton of capitulation from retail investors. In fact, I think I saw some stats that said uh, retail was leading a buying frenzy last week across both the S&P and crypto. So I think you are seeing some people try to buy the dip. Uh, we put a lot of belief in the buy the dip mantra. I think it may be a bit premature for some folks, but you're actually not seeing a, a ton of retail volume. You're just not seeing a lot of volume at all. And given how volatile it's been, you know, how do you make sense of the lack of volatility? Usually people are, are in and out when we see swings like this. So how does that kind of encapsulate how retail views the cryptocurrency world? Again, I just think that if you look at a lot of the tokens that led the early run up in crypto, the, the meme coins, Doge and Shiba Inus of the world, most of those tokens hit their bull markets top a year ago in May of 2021 and have spent the entire last year doing nothing but going down. So the last two weeks, that's not shaking someone out of Doge if they didn't already sell. You know, That's not shaking a retail investor out of their lower cap um, altcoin if they didn't already sell. And so you're seeing a lot of volatility. You're just not seeing a lot of, you're not seeing high volume. And so I think as a result, there's not a lot of retail buying interest either. There may not be a lot of selling on the retail side, but there's not a lot of buying interest either. So when people do start to go in and panic sell positions, especially with the leverage that's offered in the crypto markets across derivatives exchanges, you're going to see uh, volatility downside very quickly. And then the, the Luna and USD situation, like I said, in addition to the stock market, obviously performing the way it has, all of that is just really going to drive these speculative assets down a lot faster. And talk to me about your price forecast. Do you think in the near term that markets could fall further in crypto or have we kind of hit a bottom for, for now at least? Yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of trying to time bottoms because historically I've been pretty poor at, at timing exact bottoms and tops. I'm someone who is looking to ride cycles. And when I start to feel like things are getting a little crazy, I start to pull back. Right now, I actually have started to rescale into some of my favorite positions over the last couple of days because the sell-off was so vicious that I felt a duty to put some bids in. But I do believe that at the macro, we have more downside, but probably not before some sort of a relief bounce. Uh, what I look at is Bitcoin first and foremost from a price action indicator standpoint. If Bitcoin's going down, it's going to be very hard for Solana or Avalanche or Ethereum to outperform. At the end of the day, Bitcoin does still own a lot of that market. The total crypto market cap is down about 66% or about 60% from highs, with 40% of that being over the last four to six weeks. The last bear bull market saw the total market cap collapse 90%. Now, keep in mind, you have a lot more tokens now. So that's inflating the overall market cap. But 60% drawdown, I don't think is the end of the bear market. I think we definitely still have some more downside in front of us over the next six to you know, probably six months or so. So with that downside, you also said that you are putting some money to work. So, you know, where yeah. do you think is the most attractive space, most attractive area in crypto right now for the longer term investor? Yeah. So the reason I'm putting some money to work is because even though I believe there's more downside, I don't have a crystal ball. So I make decisions in the market that hedge out of my own predictions. Right. Uh, I believe that the prices we're seeing with Bitcoin at twenty eight thousand dollars or Solana at forty five or Ethereum at seventeen hundred. For me personally, those blue chip, if you will, crypto assets that are in the top 10 by market cap. Those are the ones that I'm looking at as longer term holds. I'm comfortable with the price we have. I'm comfortable with the long-term outlook of those firms and those brands and those startups. Uh, and even if we do get more downside, I'm comfortable buying more. So that's how I'm thinking about it. Before we go, Rich Rapetto of Piper Sandler was on Squawk Box this morning to discuss the turmoil in crypto. Here's what he said. We wrote a report last year about big technology driving big change. And I don't think, you know, we're certainly not alone. And, uh, the, the people like Michael Novogratz and, uh, uh, you know, in MicroStrategy, and, uh, they, they believe that there's more to cryptocurrency, to mo there's more to blockchain, and that's, you know, ultimately going to change, you know, a good bit of the way we do, you know, finance these days. That's all for today. We are back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.